I'm Troy Locke for the Waukesha Freeman. Although he hasn't officially announced his candidacy yet, former state senator Ted Cannabis and his wife sat down with me in their backyard at their Brookfield home to talk about his run for the U.S. Senate seat being vacated by Herb Cole. Mr. Cannabis talked about federal spending, the deficit, foreign policy, and issues that are facing senior citizens. You won the, the straw poll at the uh, Republican convention. Um, have you uh, formally announced? No, we haven't you're... announced a, a, a candidacy yet. What I said I would do at the convention and what we're continuing to do this month is to listen to people around the state and see what they want in their next U.S. Senator. I think it's really critical that uh, at a time when the country's got so many pressing issues, we've got to make sure that as Republicans uh, that we have a candidate who people want uh, and who un and they understand what he's going to try to get done in Washington. Um, so w when are you going to officially announce? Well, you know, we haven't set a date yet, but what we're going to do is continue that process that we just talked about you know, for the next month or so, and at, at that point, we'll get around, you know, formalizing a committee, and then I'm making a tour around the state to announce the candidacy. But um, we're excited about what we've heard I, so I, far. I've only been at the the Freeman for well about sure. a month and a half, but I know you've been a state senator. Can you t tell sure. me about uh, how long were you in the legislature? Sure. I was in the legislature for about nine and a half years, and I won a, a special election back in 2001 to replace Margaret Farrow when she became lieutenant governor and then for nine and a half years really concentrated on job creation in the legislature is probably what I spent most of my time working on and you know we've been very proud of uh, some of those efforts we did Act 255 which is the angel tax credit bill that helped us create a lot more entrepreneurial opportunities for for people here you know we did the um, you know broadband tax credit bill to allow broadband to uh, make its way across the state of Wisconsin more uh, more quickly, which I think is a critical piece of, of growth and, and infrastructure support growth. So there's been a variety of things that we did through our Invest Wisconsin initiatives that's taken hold. And, you know, truthfully, the legislature continues to push, which I'm really excited about, because it kind of left a legacy of ideas and kind of the ethic that that should be bipartisan. And, you know, we should really work toward uh, trying to find ways to, to grow without you know, uh, injuring, uh, you know, the current economy that we have because our current economy is, is critical as well, obviously. Um, we made a decision and I, we actually, we told people when I first ran for the legislature that I was going to serve for a, a period of time and then we were going to leave. And, you know, we were going to treat the service in the Senate as that, as service, not as a job or a career for a lifetime. And I think it's important to do that. I think it's important for people to know what your intentions are. And my intention in the, in the United States Senate would be the same, that I would do it for a couple of terms, but that I wouldn't serve for, you know, 20, 30 years in the Senate. I don't see that as being appropriate to, to any of these jobs. So you're looking at two terms and out? Yeah, I would say probably two terms and out would be about right. Yeah, I mean, typically, if you can't get done in 12 years what you said you were going to do on the way in the door, uh, you weren't working hard enough or you're not effective. What issues do you plan on highlighting uh, if you're elected to the Senate? Well, you know, I'm going to continue the work that I did in the state Senate and the U.S. Senate. Uh, the idea would be that, you know, job creation is going to be the thing that I concentrate the most on. How do we make America more competitive? How do we make Wisconsin more competitive so that we're in a position to be able to have a robust economy here at home so that people who love to work in Wisconsin, I mean, that's one of our greatest gifts is that we got so many people with a strong work ethic and you know, how do we create something that is stronger and more robust for the future so that when my kids grow up and when their kids come after them, that we've left them a legacy of a strong economy so that they can, you know, stay here and provide for their families and, you know, try to get the most out of whatever God-given abilities they have. Do, do you have anything, uh, do you have any specifics as far as jobs creation? Well, I think there's a couple of things. I mean, there's two pieces to job creation in America today. One is, is that the economy is flat on its back because of uh, the stimulus bill and the amount of spending, which was at a reckless level in my view. Whenever you take, you know, a historic level of spending, which in, in American history has been around 19 and a half or 20 percent of what we produce of our gross domestic product, and then suddenly turn around and say, we're going to start spending 24% of, of what we produce on government. 
you've got a big problem there because what you're doing is you're taking away from people who are trying to invest. You're taking away from people who want to build companies, who want to take capital, invest it in other things. And suddenly you're saying it's going to go to the government instead. That's got to change. So that's number one. Cut the spending. Get us back to historic levels. Okay. The second piece is that we have a global competitiveness problem. China holds all of that debt that we have in this country. And suddenly, you know, because of that, we have, you know, literally kind of almost ignored to a certain extent the things that have to happen to make us more competitive. Education has to be at the top of that list. We have to improve our educational climate so we can compete worldwide. We've got to be able to create our, a capital climate that competes worldwide because suddenly instead of having capital coming to America, we're having capital leave America and go other places. Um, and then the third piece is the infrastructure, you know, like we were talking about. What are we doing to be able to increase the amount of broadband in the United States to make it go faster like we did in the state of Wisconsin with the broadband tax credit bill? What can we do to create the kinds of platforms that can support this kind of growth so that small businesses, entrepreneurs can suddenly, you know, branch out and try to, uh, you know, greet the future with a little more hope? about what can happen with that. So that's venture capital, it's all these other pieces that are going to work together with that. These are all the kinds of things that I'll continue to work on in the, in the U.S. Senate that we worked on at the state level. Um, are you worried that the, the um, level of cooperation from the, the liberal side mm -hmm. uh, as far as getting spending and the deficit and the, the debt ceiling under control, Right. Uh, are you worried that yeah, Those no, things might not just not work out? Well, or? I'll tell you, it has to work out. There is no such thing as it not working out. The idea that the debt limit, uh, well, that's only part of the issue. I mean, the big issue is ultimately we have to get our debt under control, and we have to get these deficits, annual deficits, under control. There is no such thing as not doing it, uh, because if we don't do it, then you can forget about the future economy because we'll be facing the same challenges as you know these countries you read about in Europe that are so indebted to other people that they're in a position where their economies can't grow and you know they're facing you know basically bankruptcy we can't do that here and it's not American in any way shape or form so we've got to pay our bills and we've got to then turn around and figure out how we can grow our way out and you have to do both you can't do one or the other so in my view the Democrats have to at some point become serious and this president at some point has to become serious about debt and serious about the spending problem that we've got in this country and once you know some people that are like-minded come together in DC you can solve these problems they've been solved before and they can be solved again but you've got to have people of goodwill coming together to get that done uh, well I think the Republican Party I think ultimately at the end of the day believes that America is exceptional and that America is uh, really the standard bearer for liberty around the world and you can't be free if you're in that much debt. There's no freedom in America if we have that kind of debt load. Um, that's the bottom line because what we are is we're indebted to you know the Chinese, we're indebted to everyone else and suddenly you turn around and say how economically free is America? Only as free as our you know creditors allow us to be. And that's not what this country is all about. At the end of the day we have to be the place where people say, in my view, uh, that's where I want my capital to flow because the most innovations happening in America, the most opportunity is in America, growth can happen there, and now we want to make sure that we set it free and let uh, everybody create here at home. And that's what this is about, is letting our kids, you know, our generation that's you know, pulling the wagon, kind of create an economy that's going to be second to none in the world. And we're not right now because of the amount of debt that we're carrying. And I think it's shown in the lack of confidence that people have shown in the American economy over the last couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I, I spent about the last, I don't know, five or six days kind of reading through Paul's budget uh, and looking at his proposals, and I like, I like it quite a bit. And I think that what's interesting is to compare it to the Democrats' plan, because the <laughs> Democrats' plan didn't take very long to review since they don't have one. You know, so I think what we've done... Yeah, what Paul's done remarkably well is to frame the issues and to literally put forward a plan that's, you know, can solve those issues. And, you know, the Democrats can say what they want about it and say, you know, uh, terrible things about, uh, you know, the implications of what it is. The bottom line is, is if we don't solve this question, you know, all of the questions about how much government money we're going to be spending are going to be moot because we won't have 
uh, an economy to speak uh, to speak to. And you know, you're seeing it recently in a, a lot of the sell-offs that you're seeing in the Dow. They're an expression of a lack of confidence in the future of America and our economy. And I think we have to reverse it. If we don't, then uh, you know, we only have ourselves to blame. I don't remember a recovery this meager in my my lifetime, nor do I think I can remember one in my political, you know, looking at stuff politically over a course of about 50 years. I mean, this has been really, really meager. I mean, at best, um, we're barely growing. I think last quarter we grew 1.8%. I mean, truthfully, that's so light that it almost means that we don't have a recovery. And I think people, most people would argue that it isn't a recovery because there aren't any jobs with it. I mean, you're not seeing unemployment, you know, continuing to you know, go down at, a, at an aggressive rate, it's still, you know, in that 7-8% range, and that's not, uh, that's not acceptable. We've got to create jobs, and that's the best way to get us back in balance, is to have people generating revenue instead of using it. Is it, is it time for us to leave Afghanistan? Well, I, you know, I think what's interesting is watching uh, this administration trying to figure out what they want to do in foreign policy in general. I mean, you know, we're kind of led into, the president was kind of led into Libya, uh, and suddenly, you know, people say, well, what does this mean to the region? A couple things. I think the instability can be good and it can be bad, depending upon what happens with the regimes that, that start taking over these countries. In Afghanistan, obviously, you know, as a, a hotbed for terrorists, our responsibility is to make sure that American interests are served in Afghanistan as well as around the region in the Middle East. And so to blanketly say in or out, I think misses the mark about what we have to do. I think what makes the mark is the idea that, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing everything that we can to destabilize uh, terrorism, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in Pakistan, whether it's in Somalia, anywhere that it is around the world. And, you know, to, the, to that end, we have to keep that mission moving forward. Is it time to pull out troops from Afghanistan? People have been saying that for, you know, five, seven years, you know, pull out the troops in Afghanistan. Uh, I don't think it's that simple. I don't think it's about troops being deployed or troops being withdrawn. Are we meeting the mission as it relates to America's interests, which means, you know, are we stabilizing the idea that we're, we've got our arms around a lot of these terrorists and, and we have uh, clarity about, you know, how we're going to be able to contain them? Kind of the, the same thing in, in Iraq. How would you sure. adjust the situation in Iraq? There's thousands of troops uh, that are still there. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's largely up to the Iraqi government. You know, there's there's a stable government there that's continuing to, you know, progress. In my understanding, uh, I'm not a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, so I don't have access to intelligence reports. But you know, from my uh, you know sitting in Brookfield, Wisconsin, you know. Uh, understanding what I read in uh, whether it's the in Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, or what have you, it seems to me that you know if we continue to give that that government time to uh, continue to uh, grow and evolve, and that the Iraqi people continue to take on more responsibility, it seems that you can kind of uh, you know make that uh, a more natural process. Afghanistan's different, you know, it's a different place, and it has different you know problems and. There's different solutions. You, you can't just, you know, one size does not fit all in that region. That's evident from our experiences. Is there anything that we haven't talked about? I mean, that we you talked about everything. We haven't talked about the only <laughs> thing we haven't talked about is, yeah, the brewer season. That's about it. <laughs> I think brewers are going to do great, but that's, that's the way it's looking chicken. so far. Yeah, they're playing great ball. I mean, last night was a tough night, but they're playing great ball. For the Waukesha Freeman, I'm Troy Locke.